I'm not sure if they've spoken already, but uh, was Kathy Rodriguez part of your group? Kathy, go ahead. Hi, my name is Kathy Rodriguez, and I want to just tell you a little bit about myself. I've been working with the probation department for 24 years. Four years was with Alameda County. I was a commissioner for the Alameda County Housing Authority, and I was also on their personnel committee. I was also a court-appointed special advocate um, for social services um, with the youth and kids that were incarcerated in juvenile hall. I volunteered in probation for over 10 years, and the reason why I'm here is because I am a reputable person within the community, and I'm dealing with a situation. Actually, I have a situation with my aunt, and there's a past situation with my dad. Concerning um, the public guardian and social services, um, Emily Galimba, Chanel Shabana, Abby, Jessica Chia, who works for County Council, Roger Spencer, who works for the Public Defender's Office. These are employees that are employed by you, and there's a lot of misconduct going on. Um, there have, they have done quite a few things that's very unethical. Um, I wish I had more time to really get into it. I would like to have them sit down and have a meeting because it needs to be discussed further because it's been an ongoing issue for years. My dad was conserved by the conservators before and I'm going to talk about that later. Um, they are actually working with the person who abused my aunt, and the reason why I went to probate, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is my aunt when she was taken out of the abuser's hands and went to the public guardian. She was in the hospital. I believe that she was poisoned. Um, the girl that took her tried to take, got power of attorney. She took, um, she got power of attorney to take her assets, her property, and I stepped in to stop it. This is my aunt when she was in, when I was in her life, I was allowed to be in her life. I was taken away because I have a voice and I'm calling them on their issues. And so they blackballed me. They wanted to sell my aunt's property. I didn't want to do it. So as soon as that happened, boom, I was blackballed from, it was Chanel. And they wrote a report that was very negative about me. Um, I don't have any kind of history on my record at all, otherwise I wouldn't be working for the probation department for this long. Um, my concerns is that they take one side, not once have social service ever sat down and ever talked to me, ever, okay? It's, so it's all about what they say, what they want, and that's it. And it shouldn't be like that. This is the elderly community. This is what my aunt looks like now. My aunt looks like this now. This was two weeks ago. She is deteriorating. Um, if you don't give a person love, you don't give them touch from their family, they are going to die. Um, so that, you know, that's what I have to say about that. Um, my concern is that I know that, okay, good. So I, I'm on the agenda twice. I have for my dad, because my dad looks conserved as well. Um, it's real short. We'll give you another minute, okay? Okay, that's fine. That's good. So all I need is a minute because I know that I'm eventually going to get um, a part. This is my dad who's conserved by the conservator. He had brain damage. Okay, he died in uh, public guardian's care for neglect. Um, they didn't monitor his medication. They didn't monitor his pills. And he passed away. And I was devastated. Back then I wanted to do something. I wanted to advocate, but I couldn't because I was so devastated that my dad died and the way he died. Um, this is the public guardian who is working with the abuser that abused my aunt. She gets notified of everything about, she's allowed to visit, she's allowed to take my aunt out. This girl abused my aunt. She locked her in her house. She, she put chains on there. She abused her physically, mentally. She, she has domestic violence record with her own daughter and she did the same thing, locked her daughter in the house. I have submitted 120 pages of proof to social services no response. This girl can take my aunt anytime, anywhere, but her family cannot. Um, I'm, I want to make sure that we can collaborate. There needs to be collaboration with us to work with people, work with families, and not cut families out. Not everybody is bad. And that's my main goal and main objective because it is affecting the elderly community. I own property. What if I get hurt? They're going to take all my stuff and keep it. And that's concerning to me. As, as, as well as other elderly people. Any of you right here, 
that are sitting on this board. You can get hurt, and guess what? It doesn't matter. It's no respect or person. They will take your stuff, and they will do things that are unethical, and it's not right. We need to stand up and make a stand. Um, you won't be hearing the last of me. Because... Um, Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. I am an advocate. Yes, ma'am. Venus Gist? Oh, okay. Go ahead. State your name, please, ma'am. My name is Laura Holmes. Okay. Um, I'm also uh, in the same boat. I'm a victim with my parents of elder abuse through the probate system. Um, uh, I'm a victim because I am also a senior citizen. My parents were in their 90s. They were uh, the, the golden generation. My father was a 47-year Navy doctor. He That required for presidential extensions for him to continue helping the old, the senior, the brass, the admirals, the generals, and that's who he took care of. He had his advanced health care directive in place, his power of attorney, which was me. It took one sibling who was disgruntled because he wasn't named to go to court and say, oh, he didn't have capacity to name her. And, and once you're in the court system, it's all over. My father had no voice. They never listened to him. Um, he, he, it wasn't determined that he didn't have capacity. My father only lived for 10 months. He had his wife taken away from him uh, because I stopped uh, the illegal drugs they were giving him. So the conservator, the court-appointed conservator, took his wife away. He was deeply depressed. They put her in a hotel to get respite because her toenail fell off. It's insane that they get away with these things. And you know it's become a well-oiled machine of, of elder abuse, of taking, there's, there's no finances left. All their money was taken and spent. My father uh, died of malnutrition and dehydration. How can that happen? Because he was drugged. He wasn't given anything to drink. He wasn't given anything to eat. They drugged him in the morning, they gave him a bite of applesauce with uh, uh, psychotropic drugs in it that aren't recommended, that have never been tested on the elderly, yet uh, all you have to say is somebody's combative or somebody argued with me, and th those conservators can get away with doing that. And the judge is in a position that they, they allow it to happen. So, my, and then they eliminate the family from being in the lives of the of their parents. My parents were surrounded by strangers. Over a hundred caregivers came into their house. My mother, I just lost my mother in last November, and it took 330 days for me to get the judge to allow me to sit with my mother again, and she was waiting for me. My poor sweet mother had Alzheimer's, and my mother waited long enough for me to be there to say goodbye, and then she left. And um, Who's, who's taken all their money? Who's taken uh, their trust fund? Well, that's gone to all these court-appointed lawyers who have done nothing for them. There's gone to the conservator that did nothing but isolate them, deprive them of the life they had set up for themselves, and took their family away. And there needs to be awareness, because before this happened to me, I had no idea that this kind of, what my father would call monkey business, was even allowed in, in America. Um, I hope every one of you can, because every one of you could be victims the same way I'm afraid this could happen to me. It's just, uh, thank you for listening, and I hope you guys can stand up to what's going on in probate court. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. Hello, I'm Venus Gist, and I am here with Care for People Court, shout out Justice, and here to... Well, I've given my story um, in regards to my mother dealt with abuse and neglect. We took her out of the facility against the court order. She's alive. The conservator said many times she needed to be on hospice and dead, and, you know, she's alive, 85 years old, praise God. And so still um, we're working as advocates to make a difference in solutions, not just to, you know, um, complain or to, I mean, it does hurt, it's very painful, but also to bring solutions because the court has lost a lot of integrity. There's no accountability. There's no responsibility. 
and there's no commu uh, communication with the people that are coming in petitioning, like Kathy said. She's a relevant, important part, but they make that person out to be egregious, and I believe they manipulate the wards to thinking that their family member is a bad person. And it's easily done. Even Roger Spencer with the Public Defender's Office said that he believed Rose was easily manipulated, but yet Kathy is restrained from her mother, I mean from her aunt, excuse me. So if we could get back to caring and get some responsibility and accountability in the court system, like committees, and that's one of the things we're researching now, talking to other families, seeing what they've gone through. So we can get committees together to hold these judges accountable. Because right now we have SB 303, Senate Bill 303, through Governor Newsom's office, is on his desk right now, waiting to be signed. So for those of you who want to go online and read the bill, and then go into Governor Newsom's uh, account, his uh, um, website, you can put, Governor, please sign it. Okay, it's already attached in his um, website. And we need that kind of support to make a difference because that bill will support petitioners, the families, and them not outright uh, taking away their properties, their real estate. And that's what's happening. They're plundering estates. So we need mediation. We need, um, I was going to say like the children. The children have CASA. So if we could look at putting together some sort of organization, Soup Miley, and all of you for the elderly to hold the judges and the conservators and the attorneys accountable because they seem to be doing what they want to do. They're not listening to the people. They're not caring about people. And sure, families are going to have conflict. Does that mean they deserve to be abused? No, they don't. So we're just coming together as a coalition. I'm going to finish up. And we just have a few organizations. It's not just here. This is Alameda County, but it's happening nationwide. You know, we have Cedar, Linda Kincaid, and Richard Calhoun. We have Sear, Rick Black. We have Spectrum, uh, Tom Coleman. We have Kasem Cares. That's the Casey Kasem, his daughter, Carrie Kasem. We have Dr. Sugar with AAPG, Ethics Media, Lori Delgado, Alameda County Care Alliance. That's Cynthia um, Perelliot. And there's Warren Publishing, Antoinette Warren, and then Elder Dignity, Teresa Kennedy. And you can Google any of those names. I know it's going to be on video to kind of look at their organizations and see what they're standing for. And the people that they've, um, you know, definitely have come to them who've been abused by probate court systems and family court systems. So we want to work together, like Kathy said, with you, sit down, see what solutions we can come up with. It's really a serious um, crime and, and it's corrupt and we're glad that DA Nancy O'Malley is here today and, and her team and uh, also social services we see who's in the house and we wish we could have said more in front of everybody else but that's okay we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna keep coming back thank you thank you Venus when I think you're the last speaker go ahead this machine Before the speaker gets started, can can we set this up for a study session or something? I, I mean, I know there's always two sides to everything, but uh, I've kind of heard enough where I, I really need to understand a little bit more because um, I've heard things before. What we can do is... Um, the short answer is yes. What I can't do is talk about specific cases. So that I'm not able to do, but I could at least give um, or have staff give kind of an informational on what so happens. I, I'm more interested in getting a better understanding of who is keeping care of these people and, and who, who I, I guess who's being put in charge. I need to understand more of that. Okay. All right. I mean, I, we can, I don't know if the allegation is true. And again, you know, I don't know. But how could somebody be accused of domestic violence or, and then be taking care of an elder person? Uh, so I need to understand that. 
Okay. I mean, we can do that. I, I would tell you that, you know, the short answer is that there's a lot of court involvement with this. And oftentimes it's the court who's assigning the, the caregiver. Um, many times it's the family. The public guardian probably has about 25% of the cases. And typically we only have the cases when there is no relative um, to care for the family. But that's why I said it kind of an overview of, of what we do, what the different departments do, because this involves the public defender, it involves, in some cases, the district attorney. Um, I think it would be helpful to kind of provide kind of a, ge a general overview and kind of everybody's roles.